Today's topic is a file system that if you look at one part of the internet, they will praise it. And they will say it's the best thing since sliced bread. However, on the other side of the internet, they will give you doom and gloom warnings about how terrible it can be. And that file system is Baturfs. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits. Yes, if you are triggered by Baturfs, I did that on purpose, calm down. Unless you've already commented, don't delete it. It's probably bad for SEO. Anyway, BTRFS, some call it ButterFS, some even refer to it as BetterFS. It actually stands for B Tree File System, but I like Butter, so I'm going with ButterFS. I'm gonna try to TLDR this for you, but why am I here? The quick backstory is really Unraid and upgrading drives. If you don't know already, I built a 300 terabyte Unraid array, and I have since then ran out of space and I've begun upgrading. My array primarily consisted of 12 and 10 terabyte hard drives, so I had to upgrade to 20 terabyte hard drives, replacing the two 12 parities, and then I'm going through and replacing the tens kind of just as I go, which is all cool and everything, except now I have extra tens, not a bunch because I haven't actually added a bunch of drives. However, before all of this, I still had eight and 10 terabyte hard drives that I wanted to use specifically for Blu-ray NVR storage. The NVR storage ended up taking a very large portion of my Unraid array in storage because I have the theory of just, you know, store everything and I don't want to delete anything. Countless terabytes just stacking up on each other, eating away at my array. That's what made me run out of space, and that is what made me want to migrate everything over to a separate array. Two reasons, really. One, I wanted to separate all of the data from my main array, just so they don't conflict for whatever reason. Two, the whole access time, like reading all the files, bear in mind, like per folder, after I've broken it down, it's like 30 to 40,000 files inside of a folder. And that causes Windows Explorer to crash, let alone just Blue Iris trying to get a list of files. It's a little out of control. A little part in the back of your head is going, Jason, why? Just stop. Why is not a legitimate question in this video. So I wanted to separate the array in order to hopefully speed up indexing those files and also breaking those files down into, like I said before, 20 to 30,000, breaking those files down into smaller folders with the intention of not overloading indexing those files when they're being accessed. I mean, I probably have anywhere between 500,000 to 800,000 files. I don't know, I haven't actually counted them all, but I know that I've seen some folders with 100 to 200,000 plus files. So those usually crash and I'm trying to stop that. So I had some drives, they were sitting in my NVR storage. The Rosewill case that I had it's got some problems, but one of the biggest problems is just not enough hard drive space, like physical hard drive space. I have a lot of four terabytes in there because this is literally just all the trash drives. You throw them in there just to use them for something. So I have a bunch of four terabytes, some eights, and I used to have some tens. I'm running out of space. I got 48 drive capacity on my main server, but only 30 of them can be used by Unraid, which side note, if Unraid supported two actual arrays with the standard Unraid magic, you know, parody that they do, this would not even be a video at all. I would just use that and then not worry about butter. So I have all this extra space in my main server. I wanna migrate everything over. Unraid allows for multiple pools, great, except if you want any sort of parity whatsoever, any sort of basic root level, I'm not gonna say data protection, but just possible data loss avoidance, data loss reduction, let's go with that. If you want any source of data loss reduction, then you need to have some sort of parity. That's just a given. Unraid is great because you know what you're getting. Every single drive has its own folder, subfolder, all that other stuff. It's all balanced out, but it's like every drive has a complete file and, and you're just, you're good to go. BTRFS is actually a little bit more complicated, it's a lot more complicated. You get a lot of benefits of RAID or the ZFS file system where it's faster, uh, you can do data scrubbing to try to recover, but you also get you know errors in your data. Yeah, full disclosure, I'm not an expert on all the uh, file systems, so I guarantee you I'm gonna get some of these things wrong. But even though ButterFS offers similar RAID style configurations that you are normally used to, things like RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 6, they're actually, as far as my understanding, not really the same thing. In a traditional RAID 1, it writes the exact same file to two identical drives, so you always have an identical backup 
of your data. Shy of duplicating that data another time, it's about as safe as you can get when it comes to RAID. Whereas with ButterFS, it's a little different. You see, you can actually have an eight, a four, and another four terabyte hard drive in your server, set them up in RAID 1, and ButterFS will basically make it to where, yeah, there is two copies of your data, but it's spread between these drives and it's like allocating different volumes and it's you know, it's using the maximum capacity of these mixed match drives, it's still giving you technically the protection, but it's scattering your data around just to make that happen. On the basic level of, you know, two fours and one eight, that's pretty simple, probably not very risky. But if you have eights, tens, fours, sixes, whatever, and it's all spread and you all have them all set up for RAID 1, things get way more messy. And that's just my understanding. Again, could be wrong, but that's how I understand it. And then you have RAID 5, and that's kind of the topic of this video and what I'm doing, which is actually RAID 6. But not really RAID 6, it's ButterFS 6. Well, they don't really call it ButterFS 6. Anyways, RAID 5 or RAID 6. With traditional RAID 5, RAID 6, it's like you either have one drive's worth of parity. So if you lose one drive, you can use the rest of the data on the rest of your array in order to rebuild that, la that lost drive. With RAID 6, it's very similar, except it has two drives worth of parity stored. So if you lose two drives, no matter what drive, you can always rebuild them. The difference with ButterFS is that you can mix and match your drives. It has like these sub volumes. You can use eights, tens, 14s, whatever. You can mix them together. You can switch between RAID 5 and RAID 6 at will. I mean, yeah, it takes some time to rebuild it or scrub it or whatever, but you can do it. I mean, you can mix and match and, and flip it up and change it and do whatever you want to. I mean, it's basically a Harry Potter's file system, but in your unraid box. It's kind of mind blowing, to be honest. Looking at it and using it and switching it, I've already changed file systems a few times. I've already added drives multiple, like the entire thing is magical to me. Super attractive to be like, wait, I can just throw whatever extra drive. Did I say you can expand it at will? Like you can just throw extra drives in there whenever you want to. It'll take time, but it'll go through and it'll rebuild. It will expand your drive with whatever you throw in there. Obviously, depending on what which one you choose and what your drive is, all depends on how much of that you're actually going to be able to use. But you can throw another drive in there. You can expand it. That's kind of cool. This all sounds magical and it makes you want to run out and get ButterFS, you know, RAID 6, except even the developers say use at your own risk. They say, do not use this past anything that is not a testing environment. Large portions of the internet say you will lose your data. It's not a matter of if, it's you will. While others basically say, no, you're good. Just have no power loss. Like don't really stress the server and you should be okay. All right, let's say I'm gonna run RAID 6 because- You guys silly, I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> Unraid, they've been saying, you know, the uh, additional array where they use the traditional parity through Unraid. They've been saying they're gonna add a secondary array or maybe multiple arrays for a long time, but we haven't seen that yet. I would love to use a secondary Unraid array with the Unraid parity style. They just don't have it yet. So this is what I'm stuck with. I have the option of A, running Unraid in a Docker and having a sub Unraid system, which sounds ridiculous to me, but it's technically an option. Or B, I play around with ButterFS and I take the uh, Jesus take the will style of data storage. Jesus take my data. Naturally, I don't wanna pay $130 for another Unraid copy just to run one single feature on my Unraid server. So, ButterFS. So let's fast forward through what I was able to pick apart over the last few weeks from the internet, from some feedback, and also lead with if you have personal experience with, you know, RAID 5 or RAID 6 equivalent ButterFS systems that you've used, you've experienced, maybe they've crashed, maybe they haven't, whatever. If you've actually used them in a real world, set it up, leave a comment down below. I wanna hear from you. I wanna know some best practices, some tips, uh, if you had a crash, what were you doing when it crashed? What made it crash? Like for example, one person on Discord, AZ, he was just like, you know, just do not have a power loss. If you have a power loss, there's a lot of file systems that can recover better than ButterFS, especially in a RAID 5 or RAID 6 setup. So don't have a power loss, you might be okay, but you're stressing the file system. So you could just be signing up for data loss if you have a power loss. But furthermore, my research really led to Dirty data, fragmented 
data or any kind of uh, like a V disk, a virtual disk. With a V disk, let's say you have something like a 500 gigabyte hard drive uh, for a virtual machine, something you're working with, you've installed Windows, but that actual file, when you store that on a, because it's an expandable drive, uh, it's expandable virtual drive, that actual file is only reading 42 gigs. You see that file expands and contracts dynamically depending on how much file storage you actually have in that virtual machine. So what you end up with is a ton of fragmented data being written and deleted and just kind of handled with this one file system. And ButterFS, again, well, I might be wrong here, ButterFS has a copy on write it's like a root feature that's, you know, that it gives you like uh, snapshots of your data. It gives you compression. Uh, it's kind of like root of ButterFS, but that copy on write just doesn't play well with fragmented or scattered data. It's just not really that good with it. And from my understanding, it is one of the best ways to lose your data is to be playing around with fragmented data. So what that means for me at least is to either go into Unraid, into that pool or into the share, I'm sorry, go into the share and disable the copy on write feature. Yeah, I'm not gonna get the checksums that comes with ButterFS or the snapshots. I, I get, I don't even know how to use the snapshots with Unraid, but still I'm losing out on some of that, but I gain the ability to hopefully not lose data. So things like VDisk or maybe a database you're running, you know, through the VDisk or whatever, anything that's just fragmented, dirty data that would be read, read and written to the array, that kind of stuff is already bad for you. But if you have copy on write disabled, it's possibly less bad for you. My very specific example is long-term storage of NVR footage. That's it. That's the only thing that I have, long-term storage of NVR footage. If I lose it, it's not gonna be the end of the world. In fact, there's a little part of me that just kinda of hopes one day I wake up and all that data's gone and then I can stop worrying about it. Just hashtag delete that and I'm done. But until that data burns down, I still wanna manage it just to see if I can. I still wanna store it just to be able to pull it up. It's still there. And now I'm using RAID 6, ButterFS, RAID 6, ButterFS 6. Again, comment down below if you have experience in this, but here's the way I look at it. I've disabled the copy on write and the share through Unraid, right? Check, that's like primary issue number one. Two, Blue Iris, the way I have it set up, it's just dumping files of a certain age over to long-term storage. The only like real-time reading and writing thing that's gonna be going on is possibly moving files from one folder to the next folder down because the way I have it set up, it's tiered. It's, it'll move it into one, two, three, and then just the older it gets or however many files or whatever you know flavor I choose, it's just gonna move those files down to the other folders. It shouldn't be moving more than let's say 100 files at once, once everything's set up but it will be copying files to it. It will be moving files at the same time, potentially. And there is a little bit of real time like read and write thing going on that I am possibly asking for data corruption. If Unraid dumps a file that's let's say a gig, even if it changes the folder, you're really not even moving the file on the hard drive, like physically, you're just like moving the indexing for the file. So it's still physically stored on the hard drives, the same exact place, just the index of where those files are stored are changed. So I am going to risk it. Nothing on this file system is gonna have anything that is going to be a dire loss if it fails. I don't want it to fail. I'm gonna do everything I can, including go out of my way and buy all this stuff and do, I'm trying, but if it fails, it's not the end of the world. I mean, in reality, do I need years of security footage stored? Absolutely freaking not. Do I think it's kind of cool to be able to say, yeah, I can go back four years and look at this? Sure, does that mean anything to anybody else? No, you understand why this is stupid. But until I lose all of my data, it's something stupid that I'm dealing with. And that's that. So is ButterFS RAID 5 or RAID 6 as dangerous as the internet says? I don't know, I'm going to find out. To help mitigate some of the risk, I've disabled the copy on write. I'm not gonna use any kind of virtual disk, like VMs, any kind of databases, anything like that. It's just file storage. Also, definitely not running torrents on a ButterFS RAID 5 or RAID 6 because that's the whole allocated dirty data thing. No, just a terrible idea. Just basic storage. That's it. Why? Because that is the option in Unraid. Unraid will not allow us to use multiple arrays yet with the whole Unraid parity system. And 
I can add drives, use mixed drives, and do everything almost like the Unraid system, except it's actually faster to read and write from. Maybe not the seek time, but just straight up reading and writing, the performance is definitely faster than a standard Unraid array. So make sure to leave a comment down below with any real world experience you have with ButterFS. For the positive or negative, you have some tips and tricks, things that I should add on top of this in order, in order to secure my data, then make sure to let me know. But more importantly, if you have crashed a RAID 5 or RAID 6 ButterFS, please let me know what you did, what led up to that. Because the best way for me to avoid that same exact issue is to completely avoid whatever you were doing in the first place. Well, that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.